fashion in Clueless. As I've mentioned many times before on this channel, contemporary costume design often goes overlooked and unappreciated. Compared to period or historical costuming, it isn't seen as impressive an art form, which is really a pity because it's just as, if not more, difficult to costume a contemporary film. Unlike a historical film where you can use the general public's lack of knowledge about the time period to your advantage, contemporary costuming is subject to far more criticism because audiences feel better equipped to judge if it's fashionable or not. Contemporary costume design isn't just overlooked by audiences, but by the entertainment industry itself, with the majority of awards being given to films with glamorous and grandiose period costumes, even if they aren't necessarily great. Obviously, not every contemporary film has amazing costuming, but when it's done well, it should be praised, and there is perhaps no film more deserving of said praise than 1995's Clueless. Written and directed by Amy Heckerling, the film is a contemporary adaptation of Jane Austen's 1815 novel, Emma, which follows a young English girl who is incredibly beautiful and wealthy, but also vain and naive. She spends her time meddling into other people's lives and relationships, convinced that she knows best, even though she is in fact wildly inexperienced. While she has good intentions, she tends to cause more harm than good, but by the end of the novel, she learns the error of her ways, maturing and falling in love in the process. Heckerling took the central story of Jane Austen's novel and modernized it, turning the protagonist, Emma Woodhouse, into 16-year-old Cher Horowitz, a popular and wealthy high schooler who lives in Beverly Hills. Most of the original plot remains, Emma's matchmaking, her flirtation with Mr. Knightley, and Harriet's makeover. But in Clueless, everything has been updated for a 90s audience. When asked why she decided to tell the story of Emma, Heckerling told the LA Times that the character of Emma Woodhouse was in a sense timeless, and I think that the fact that Cher feels like a real teenager is proof of that. With costumes designed by Mona May, who also designed for Enchanted, The House Bunny, and a lot of other iconic films, Clueless is often cited as one of the most fashionable films in history. But besides the clothes being cute, did you know that they also helped tell the story? Today we're going to be looking at the costumes of four female characters from Clueless, Amber Marins, Ty Frazier, Dion Davenport, and Cher Horowitz. As per usual, we'll be looking at how the costuming relates to the story, the respective characters, and to pop culture as a whole. And just as a note, while Clueless did have a short-lived TV show in the 90s, it has a vastly different premise than the film, and as such, I won't be using it in this analysis. Anyway, let's get into it. Amber Marins. A small thing that even the most ardent fan of Clueless may not initially notice about the film is that the costume design is also a subtle indicator of time passing. When the film begins, it's the fall semester and we see characters wearing layers and autumnal colors like deep red, dark green, and black. When the spring semester rolls around, we see a shift to pastel colors and clothing that's a better fit for warmer weather. This is a very clever way of using costume design as a storytelling device, allowing the audience to see the progression of the school year without having to directly tell them, something more recent films often struggle with. Taking on the role of Mrs. Elton with just a touch of Jane Fairfax, Amber is one of the few characters outside of the primary female friend group that is given a fair amount of attention. While both popular and seemingly running in adjacent social circles, Amber and Cher have a bit of a frenemies relationship, with the two often exchanging snide remarks with one another. She's a full-on Monet. What's a Monet? It's like the painting, see? From far away it's okay, but up close it's a big old mess. Do you prefer fashion victim or ensemble challenge? Ah. Like her book counterpart, Amber is ill-mannered, pretentious, and garishly dressed. Throughout the film, the majority of her time is spent attempting to diminish Cher's achievements, typically when it comes to schoolwork. Hello! Was I the only one listening? I mean, I thought it reeked. I believe that was your designer imposter perfume. Whatever. If she doesn't do the assignment, I can't do mine. During the brief montage at the beginning of the film, we see Amber in three different outfits. The first, a purple sweater with a yellow patch that kind of resembles the Rugrats logo, along with a shiny orange skirt and reflective choker. We only see it for a moment, but it foreshadows the way her character will be portrayed throughout the film. Showy and somewhat out of place, constantly looking for a way to draw attention to herself. While lounging in Cher's pool, she wears an ode to the early 1970s with flipped out hair, giant statement earrings, and a star-patterned bikini. It's kind of reminiscent of the outfits Kirsten Dunst and Michelle Williams wear at the end of the movie Dick. Throughout the film, we'll see Amber in outfits that feel distinctly vintage, and it's an interesting juxtaposition to Cher and Dion's wardrobe, which are very much in the present. 
During this sequence, she also wears a blue fur-trimmed set with pink socks, matching ribbons, and a t-shirt with a heart on it. And overall, the look is very similar to what Cher is wearing, down to the heart shirt. Again, this is foreshadowing Amber's habit of copying Cher's style. Considering the girls seem rather close and friendly at this point, we as the audience do wonder what happened that made them drift apart and become more hostile to one another. Perhaps Amber's desire for popularity was more important than their friendship? When we get to school, Amber is wearing a pair of high-rise jeans, a white t-shirt, a black feather trim jacket with a matching headband, and a choker necklace. While the base of the outfit is fairly casual, we can see that Amber is desperate to be the center of attention, choosing to wear something that inherently makes people look at her because of its outlandishness. It's not necessarily a bad outfit, but it's probably not the most appropriate thing to wear at school. In an earlier scene, Cher wears a black feather trim top and skirt, and she often wears other things with feather motifs. Perhaps this is Amber aggressively trying to take that look for herself. In brief scenes throughout the school term, we see Amber in a variety of other outfits that express her more is more fashion philosophy. This military-inspired look features a green jacket with cheetah trim, an animal print skirt, a camouflage bag and socks, combat boots, and dog tags. All of these elements combined make the entire look quite cartoonish and silly, with way too many clashing patterns to be considered fashion forward by anybody. But funnily enough, Amber likes the look so much that she actually winds up wearing the outfit again later in the film. While Cher never wears the same thing twice, we can see that Amber doesn't have the same reservations. And perhaps in that sense, she isn't as preoccupied with appearances as Cher is. We briefly see Amber in a near exact copy of an outfit that Cher wears earlier, down to the zip up plaid jacket and the satin top. But she's added a vinyl cap for some edge, and it's of course in her signature red color. On one hand, we could attribute this to Cher generally being stylish and setting trends at school, but considering Amber's personality, it's far more likely that she's just copying Cher and hoping some of that popularity rubs off. In general, Amber seems to have a fondness for animal prints and furry textiles, driving home the point that she's gaudy and tacky as that is often what those things are associated with. At one point, we even see her in a pair of black leather pants, a giant shag fur jacket, and fuzzy earmuffs. It almost looks like she's parodying a 30-year-old housewife on a ski vacation with her wealthy husband, which, funnily enough, is the exact lifestyle that actress Eliza Donovan thinks the character would have in the future. Where do you think your characters would be today? I think Amber would be married to an extremely wealthy man Hello. and driving him crazy. Even during gym class, Amber is still attempting to one-up Cher and make herself stand out in the crowd. While the school doesn't appear to have an official PE uniform, there seems to be an unspoken rule that black, white, and gray are the colors to wear. And wouldn't you know it, Amber is the only person flaunting that rule by wearing another color red. Apart from her hair, which has been done up in an elaborate exercise unfriendly style, her phone, shoes, and top are also red. In film, red is often used to symbolize power, and as such we can see that Amber is attempting to appear more powerful than she truly is. You'll also notice that there are star details on her hoodie top and shoes, perhaps symbolic of the idea that in her mind she is a star. It's also a motif that she wears at other points in the film. You'll also notice that Amber is wearing a pair of white over-the-knee socks, an accessory we have come to associate with Cher. This not only affirms Cher's influence on the school's trend cycle, but also Amber's desire to replace her. One of Amber's most outlandish outfits in the film is this striped number. Not only has her hair been done up in a gravity-defying ode to Pippi Longstocking, but she's also wearing a multicolored striped turtleneck with matching socks and a floral skirt. Again, she's mixing a lot of patterns, but here I kind of think it works. Although, the socks are a bit much. Eagle-eyed viewers will also notice that this is when Amber breaks up with her boyfriend after she catches him ogling Ty, leaving her available to date Elton in the future. It's also interesting to note that the outfit itself is complementary to the one Cher, Dion, and Ty are wearing. You could attribute this to it being fall and those colors generally being trendy in that season, but it's also very likely that because of their little photo shoot that she actually asked the other girls what they'd be wearing ahead of time and wanted to match, while of course still standing out in her Amber way. At the Christmas party in the valley, we see Amber in the red dress that Cher had worn previously. She doesn't do much to change the look apart from styling her hair in a beehive vest do, and as a result, it comes off as more costumey than when Cher wore it. What's interesting about the outfit is what it says about Amber's personality. She had assumed that Cher wasn't going to show up and that as a result, no one would notice that she was wearing the same dress, revealing that she's actually somewhat of a coward. At the end of the day, Amber aspires to be Cher. She just doesn't want to admit it. And I love that when Cher confronts Amber about being an outfit repeater and a clone, 
Amber attempts to deny it by literally saying Cher's catchphrase. She's the ultimate wannabe. Uh, was that you going through my laundry? As if. As if. Ugh, as if. As if. When school starts back up again, Amber is wearing a truly absurd, nautical-inspired outfit. On her head is a bright red sailor's cap with a diamond dollar symbol, and she's wearing a matching red skirt set. With her red hair and the red lipstick, it's all a bit much to look at, and considering everyone else has switched to lighter colors for the new semester, she looks terribly out of place and a bit behind trend-wise. Honestly, she almost looks like a clown. At the college party, Amber is wearing one of her more tame outfits, yet still manages to look a bit gaudy. It's a talent, honestly. The skirt, which is ruffled and tutu-esque, is quite short, showing the bike shorts underneath. And considering the silhouette is far poofier than her other outfits, we can assume it's because she wants to appear as feminine and demure as possible in front of Elton. Because her character is still a bit outlandish, by having the majority of the outfit be black, it still seems true to her style. But by adding the princess tiara to the outfit equation, it almost feels like she's parodying herself. There's also something distinctly dated about the look. It sort of feels like something Madonna would have worn back in the 80s. Aside from her relationship with Elton following the book, I love how it totally works for the character. Of course she would start up a relationship with a guy who previously had feelings for Cher. It's just one of the many ways that she would attempt to be superior, and I also feel like Elton would purposely try to date someone that he knows Cher hates. They're a perfect, awful match for one another. After Ty's newfound popularity, we see Amber attempt to befriend her, likely because she sees it as a way to increase her own social standing while simultaneously getting under Cher's skin. We unfortunately can't see much of this outfit, but with the beaded yellow cardigan and pearl details, it looks very 1950s inspired and very feminine. Perhaps she's attempting to look more inviting so Ty will feel more comfortable around her. Nearing the end of the film, we don't see much of Amber. She makes a brief appearance here, wearing a purple top with a sweater vest that is once again reminiscent of some of Cher's outfits, but a lot busier when it comes to accessories. No matter how hard Amber tries, she just can't seem to stop going one step too far. At Miss Geist's wedding, Amber literally looks like a doll. She has on a large, puffy plaid dress with a yellow petticoat, and keeping in line with her character thus far, she also has on a pink feather headband and a boa. As per usual, she looks pretty tacky, especially with the strings of costume jewelry, but it's all very fitting for her character. Unlike Cher or Ty, she doesn't have any character development throughout the film, so wearing something that is essentially the same as one of her earlier outfits makes perfect sense. Also, how typical is it for her to dress this over the top at somebody else's wedding? Overall, Amber is a fantastic modernized version of her book counterpart. She's snobby and rude and thinks of herself as the epitome of fashion and taste, even when the majority would disagree. While we're supposed to hate Amber's outfits, I personally get a huge kick out of them. They're camp as hell. And here's a fun fact. According to costume designer Mona May, Amber actually had dozens of other outfits, but they just didn't make it into the film, unfortunately. Ty Frazier. Played by the late, great Brittany Murphy, Ty goes through the greatest physical transformation in the film. Having moved from New York, Ty's style is distinctly different from the rest of the girls and their valley girl chic look. She could be a farmer in those clothes. <laughs> when she's introduced, she's wearing baggy jeans, sneakers, an oversized t-shirt, and a plaid button-up, which is in stark contrast to the rest of the girls' body-bearing and figure-hugging gym clothes. While plaid is worn regularly throughout the film, during this sequence, Ty is the only one wearing the print, as if to symbolize how much of an outsider she is. Based on her clothing alone, we can assume that Ty doesn't actually have much in common with Cher and Dion, and had they not interfered as a way to annoy Amber, they likely wouldn't have wound up as friends. We've got to adopt her. Cher, she is toe up. Our stock would plummet. T, don't you want to use your popularity for a good cause? No. The clothing that Ty and Travis wear are very complementary to one another, revealing how Ty inherently would have been drawn to the stoners and that she and Travis were meant to be together. By prioritizing comfort and coziness, we get a good idea of Ty's personality. She's more down to earth than the rest of the girls, caring less about appearances and more about what's on the inside. We also get the sense that Ty is perhaps uncomfortable with her own femininity, not only because she dresses as more of a tomboy, but expresses discomfort at the idea of a makeover and is nervous about her newfound attention. Let's do a makeover. <gasps> no. While Amber wears a lot of fur, feathers, and leather to fit her more prickly personality, Ty wears a lot of cotton and solid prints to represent her more relaxed and easygoing temperament. 
Despite what the nanny or Chanel's fall winter 1995 collection would have you believe, the majority of young women in the mid to late 90s were not wearing fitted blazer sets and knee high socks. It was much more of a casual and comfortable time period, as seen with the rise of the grunge look that many celebs wore, like Reese Witherspoon, Drew Barrymore, and even Alicia Silverstone herself. The slouchy Seattle trend was represented in Clueless not just with Ty's clothing, but in a brief scene where Cher derides her generation's fashion sense and makes fun of Josh. So the flannel shirt deal, is that a nod to the crispy Seattle weather, or are you just trying to stay warm in front of the refrigerator? So, okay, I don't want to be a traitor to my generation and all, but I don't get how guys dress today. Costume designer Mona May similarly disliked the grunge look of the 90s, stating in an interview with Vanity Fair, quote, It was just dreadful. The plaid shirts and baggy pants and girls looked so masculine. There was really none of the girliness. And she went on to say in a different interview with Pop Sugar, quote, It was all Kurt Cobain. Girls and boys looked the same, giant big baggy shirts, big baggy trousers, so it was really like, how do we change that? How do we really find the look for the girls to emulate, to be girly again? That was our goal. Ty's first outfit post-makeover epitomizes the aesthetic that she'll wear for the majority of the film. It's far more feminine than before, but she still looks comfortable and approachable. The design of her top is a bit childish, playing into her character's goofier nature while the materials are soft, invoking a friendliness. It's also interesting to note that Ty's hair is now brown, not only creating a more natural look, but it also distances herself visually from Amber, who also has red hair. Of course, Cher would want Ty to look as dissimilar to her nemesis as possible. While exercising with Cher, we can see how different the two girls are at their core. While both are wearing athletic wear, Cher looks polished, feminine, and fashion forward, while Ty's workout attire is more basic with a childish floral print. Notice the plaid shirt wrapped around her waist? It's not only an ode to her original clothing, but also allows her to cover up more as she's not quite as comfortable showing off her body as Cher is. As far as everyone's concerned, you're the most popular girl in your school, and the fact that you hang with Dee and I, well, that speaks very highly of you. On her first day of school after the makeover, Ty immediately garners attention from boys and girls alike. Now that she's officially joined their group, she dresses in a complimentary way to both Dion and Cher, with all three girls wearing similar silhouettes and colors. Unlike Cher and Dion, Ty wears a pair of stockings which allows more of her body to be covered, as she's still getting used to her new look, and it also has the benefit of making her look more childish. Cher and Dion have sharp collars, headbands, and thigh-high socks, which gives them more of a mature look in comparison to Ty, who has on a soft cardigan and a t-shirt with a round neckline. With her green velvet scrunchie, we can see that she's not quite at headband status yet, but she's getting there. Her wardrobe also reflects her character's slightly lower economic status. Her outfit looks like it came from the mall, whereas the other girls look straight off the runway. The party in the valley takes place around Christmas, as we can see from the decorations and everyone's outfits. Considering Ty was initially meant to have a simple dinner at Cher's house, what she's wearing is understandably more casual than everyone else. She's wearing a red striped shirt, a plaid jacket, and black pants with suspenders. While the jacket calls back to the many plaid outfits Cher and Dion have worn throughout the film, the rest of the styling makes it clear that Ty picked this out on her own. The pants and suspenders add a boyish twist, while the striped shirt seems like something she would just have in her closet. She's very on theme, showing that she's missing the fashion creativity and flair that the rest of the girls have already developed. When Ty learns that Elton isn't interested in her, she's wearing a houndstooth skirt with patches and a simple black crop top. The look overall is quite simple, but also is an ode to the grungy aesthetic that she started off in. I highly doubt Cher would be caught dead buying either item, so we can presume that they were purchased by Ty herself. She's definitely dressing more femininely, but is still gravitating towards her true self. During this scene, both she and Cher are actually wearing quite similar outfits, but Ty, the more sexually experienced one, is revealing a lot more skin. When they skip class, Ty throws on a red sweater, helping solidify the impression that she is an approachable person, especially when compared to both Cher and Dion, who look far more dressed up. The red of the sweater can also be symbolic of her current romantic status. Despite being hurt by Elton, she still has feelings for him. At the college party, we can see that Ty still hasn't totally gotten the hang of dressing herself yet. Cher, I have a question. What do you think I should do with this thing? Should I, um, like, tie it around? Not only does she ask Cher for fashion advice, but due to her insecurities, she winds up changing the ensemble several times over the course of the evening. Still recovering from her heartbreak with Elton, it feels like she's trying just a little too hard to get attention. Like many of her other outfits, there's a sense of childishness and innocence in what Ty is wearing. And it's also very clear that she has her own unique look. 
We would never see Cher or Dion walking around in a pair of patchwork overalls and a floral blouse. At this moment, Ty is feeling incredibly vulnerable, and as such, she reverts to the more oversized silhouette she's more comfortable in. As she becomes more confident in herself, flirting with a group of boys at the mall, her wardrobe is more feminine than we've ever seen it. She's wearing a pair of pink pants, a white button-up polo, and a white headband. Apart from the pants, this looks exactly like something Cher would wear, and it's at this moment we can see their roles reverse and the power dynamics start to shift. Would you look at that girl? She is so adorably clueless. I'm amazed. That I am devoting myself so generously to someone else? No, that you found someone even more clueless than you are to worship you. Boy, considering how clueless she was, Ty certainly had that damsel in distress act down. With Ty's newfound popularity also comes a new style philosophy. She's playing the part of the popular girl, mimicking not only Cher's style of dress, but also her attitude. Lodies generally hang on the grass scene you know, all over there. Sometimes they come to class and say bonehead things, and we all laugh, of course, but no respectable girl actually dates them. Mm-mm. Could you show down a little bit? No. Hello. Don't the slackers prefer that grassy you knoll over there? <laughs> <laughs> At lunch, we see her sporting a stiff white blouse layered underneath a blue top with matching barrettes. As we can see, any semblance of the past Ty is gone. She's not only starting to look like Cher, but is starting to act like her too. When Ty comes over to Cher's house to reveal her new crush on Josh, she looks like a carbon copy of her friend. The plaid skirt set has the distinctly sharp silhouette that we've previously seen on Cher, and paired with the white socks and headband, Ty's transformation into the Queen Bee is almost complete. The only difference between the two is perhaps in the little details. For instance, where Cher would have worn a blouse with this outfit, Ty is wearing a t-shirt. Mona May described Ty's transformation as, quote, She becomes a mini-me of Cher, wearing plaid-coordinated outfits, maybe not coming from high-end designers, but coming from the mall. Although Ty means no ill will, she's just happy to finally be accepted at school, to Cher, this is threatening. Not only has Ty taken over Cher's role at school, but now she's attempting to take her place at home. Ty being the most popular girl in school? It was like some sort of alternate universe. Why am I even listening to you to begin with? You're a virgin who can't drive. Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. Visually, Cher can see their similarities, and although she tells Ty that she doesn't think she stands a chance with Josh, on the inside, Cher isn't as confident. After all, Ty seems to have picked up the role quite naturally, down to the insensitivity, harsh comebacks, and extreme self-confidence. Cher is finally getting a taste of her own medicine and is being treated the way she's treated others. What did I do? I've created some sort of a monster. It's also important to note that this plaid skirt set is pink, revealing Ty's blossoming feelings for Josh. After their fight, Cher and Ty distance themselves from one another, but they eventually make up. Having spent time apart with both girls reevaluating their own behavior, Ty comes back with a new slash old look and attitude. This outfit is a combination of the styles we've seen her in thus far, feminine yet comfortable, while still portraying a youthful innocence. It's kind of like Barbie if she was a skater girl. Now that Ty has accepted herself for who she is, she feels less inclined to dress like Cher and wants to be her own person. She and Travis have always been a perfect fit for one another, and I love that his outfit here is incredibly similar to her first day outfit. Mona May said about the character at this point, quote, she's kind of evolved into who she is becoming this young, youthful, sporty girl with striped t-shirts, her little pigtails, cute headbands, and sparkly necklaces. If you look at the bookend versions of her at the beginning and end of the film, it's the same person, but now improved. When she was dressing like Cher, she really wasn't herself. And she further clarified in a different interview, quote, It's a beautiful journey of hers where she finds out who she is. She kind of takes that Cher persona in a way. She wants to be her. But then she finds out, maybe this isn't really me. Both Cher and Ty go through a style evolution as a result of personal growth, and it's interesting to see how they stay true to themselves while still evolving. At Miss Geist's wedding, Ty is wearing a blue dress with a matching choker, and while I do think it's a fit for her personality, I still wish she'd worn pink for visual symmetry. It almost looks like the rest of the girls forgot to tell her what to wear, which would honestly be such a terrible feeling. But considering Travis is literally wearing a graphic tee and a clip-on tie, maybe the two of them are just oddballs who don't care about that sort of thing. And while not necessarily related to the topic at hand, please go watch Yara Zaid's video all about Brittany Murphy. She really was such an amazing actress who deserved so much better.
Dion Davenport. Best friends, Cher admits that their camaraderie is largely due to their social standing, with both girls knowing what it's like for other people to be jealous of them. Canonically, Dion's fashion sense is meant to be quite daring in comparison to Cher's, although obviously not nearly as crazy as Amber's. Many of her outfits purposely feature tighter and shorter silhouettes as she's the more sexually experienced of the two girls and also has a bolder personality. Mona May said, quote, Cher, she is the leader. She is the queen of the school in a way. She's very put together. She's tailored. Dion has more experience with boys. She's a little sexier. Her clothes are a little bit shorter and risque, maybe. By having the girls dress similarly, the audience is immediately able to understand their bond as friends as well as their shared values. Unlike Amber, who is a copycat, Cher and Dion complement one another. During the opening montage, we see Dion in an all-white crochet swimsuit and platform heels that look significantly more mature than Cher's gingham bikini. And while sitting with Cher and Amber, Dion's outfits come off as a touch edgier and more hip. Unlike the other two who are wearing furs and other girlish trim, Dion is wearing a miniskirt, knee-high boots, and a ringer tee. She doesn't look underdressed, but it's more effortless than the other two. According to the costume designer, they purposely wanted Dion to look more colorful than Cher. Quote, she had the leopard, the neon, the vinyl, and the 50s purses. She was much more adventurous, so we had a brighter, super fun color palette for her. Both girls regularly wear a variety of hair accessories from berets to headbands, but Dion experiments with hats far more often and with far more whimsy. While Cher calls Dion's hat an ode to Dr. Seuss, it actually looks more like a reference to My Fair Lady, or perhaps they're even a reference to the hats that many black women wear to Sunday service. In an interview with Elle magazine, actress Stacey Dash stated, quote, I loved the thigh highs and the Mary Janes, but to me the hats were the icing on the cake. Women don't wear hats anymore. Those hats became characters unto themselves. Amy Heckerling and Mona May have both stated that Cher and Dion would coordinate their outfits for school every day, and there is no better example of this than these outfits. Dion's black plaid suit is quite similar to Cher's in silhouette, but hers has added details. Notice the black vinyl on the lapels and cuffs. It not only ties into the look of her hat, but also is symbolic of the more mature and outspoken persona that Dion has. The two girls are often matching, yet never clashing, and by giving Dion a simpler color palette, she and Cher look like a cohesive unit, while each still standing out individually. The next time you watch this movie, check out the background characters. You'll see various other girls around school start to wear very similar outfits, showing how Dion and Cher influence their peers. Besides making a lot of the girls' outfits by hand, Mona May also used vintage pieces that she found at thrift stores as well as contemporary mall fashion. By mixing high and low fashion, she created a unique aesthetic that was both stylish yet wearable and completely unique to the film. While shopping, Dion wears a pair of leopard pants, a black mesh top, a leopard backpack, and a striped cap. Unafraid of showing a little skin, we can see that she's much more comfortable with her body than Cher is. And while Cher seems to have a penchant for skirts and blazers, Dion experiments with the pieces in her wardrobe far more often, creating an edgier look that stands out in comparison to Cher's more classic chic style. Although Amber's outlandish wardrobe choices often come off as garish or tacky, Dion just seems bold and courageous. When the girls move forward with their matchmaking plan, we see Dion wear an assortment of red outfits, as if she's dressing for the part of Cupid. In this scene, her orange and yellow top contrasts with Cher's pinstripe set, while her hat is the perfect Dion touch. And while it may look like an odd choice today, these soft top hats were actually quite popular in the 90s, with a variety of musicians wearing them quite regularly. Dion's skirt is classic tartan, as if she didn't want to completely ignore the grunge movement, and underneath she wears a pair of red stockings. Overall, it's a bright and bold look that is quite fun and experimental. She isn't afraid to break a few fashion rules here and there. Moving on, we see Dion in a red vinyl miniskirt, black fishnet tights, and a blue sweater vest. It again makes the two girls look like a pair without either one looking like they're copying one another. We as the audience can understand that while they have a lot in common, they are definitely still their own person. As previously mentioned, there seems to be an unspoken monochromatic rule when it comes to the girls' gym clothes, as you can see even with their cheerleading uniforms. And this was confirmed in an interview by Mona May. Quote, We imagined that there was a wardrobe code for what the girls could wear in gym, which was black and white clothing. And if that was the case, we could make their costumes different and flattering for each actress, while sticking with the black and white theme. Had there been a larger budget, both Mona May and Amy Heckerling stated that they would have loved to have the characters' outfits coordinate throughout the film, but instead had to limit it to specific moments like the gym class, Christmas party, and Miss Geist's wedding. 
During Jim, we see that Dion has gone for a simpler look when compared to Amber's pinstriped monstrosity. Like Cher, she has layered much of her clothing to create a sleek, form-fitted look. But with the addition of the white paisley scarf, she looks just a touch edgier than the rest of the girls in their standard sportswear. While it's been very obvious that Cher is all about appearances and popularity, it's not until this moment where we see that Dion shares very similar sentiments, expressing concern about their own social standing if they choose to befriend Ty. After gym, she and Cher change into other outfits, and we see Dion in a matching black skirt and jacket set with a neon pink crop top. Overall, the look is very simple with just a hint of rock and roll, and this is perhaps the outfit where she and Cher look the least compatible. However, she does compliment her boyfriend Murray, allowing the audience to understand that in spite of their very public relationship problems, the two are still a good fit for one another. Both Dion and Cher are incredibly judgmental of others, criticizing Ty for her drug use and implying that if she dates one of the stoners, no one will respect her and that she will immediately start off on a bad foot. Dion and Cher care about their popularity and image first and foremost, not how their actions make other people feel. Dion's next outfit is one of my favorites in the entire film. The sharp collar with the gorgeous fluted cuffs is utterly gorgeous and creates a really beautiful silhouette in comparison to some of the other dresses we've seen thus far. Keep in mind that just the day before, Cher had worn a red dress herself. So not only do the two girls likely have interest in the same trends, but they have enough foresight and consideration for one another to not wear a similar thing on the same day. The differences in these two dresses are also representative of Cher and Dion's differences in personality. Cher is a bit more soft-spoken and seemingly sweet, while Dion is more willing to be bold and bossy, as seen through her interactions with Murray. While shopping, we see Dion in a pair of jeans, a patterned top, and an orange bomber jacket. Overall, it's very simple, but cohesive, and we can understand that she dresses for the occasion. At school, she gravitates towards the preppy look, but at the mall, she wants to be more comfortable. Also, look at all the outfits in the display window. Don't they all look exactly like something Cher and Dion would wear? Considering her next outfit is unlike anything we've seen her in thus far, I firmly believe that Dion went and bought something specifically for the party. Similarly, Cher changes her outfit entirely for the event. Because Dion is constantly experimenting with different hats and hairdos, it's no surprise that she's changed up her hair specifically for the occasion by twisting ribbons into her braids. Her top, which has green, purple, and red flowers, fits the Christmas theme, but isn't too on the nose. The large skirt is also a nice contrast to Cher's form-fitted dress and Ty's trousers. And in a way, I think Dion's outfit stands out the most, even if it isn't necessarily the most ostentatious. We see Dion in another neon pink outfit when the girls get back to school. She tends to show more skin than the rest of the girls, and as such, her top is not only sheer, but rather low cut. With a leopard print blazer and skirt, the silhouette of her outfit is very similar to others that she and Cher have worn in the past, but it comes off as more adventurous and risque. And considering the sex talk that is occurring, that's pretty fitting. While she and Cher are planning for her date, with Christian, Dion arrives in an adorable pleated plaid skirt, a baby blue polo, and matching headband. It resembles many of her earlier outfits, but updated for the spring season, and again, it's complementary to what Cher is wearing. Also, I love that Dion is the one Cher decides to call over. Not only has Dion actually been in a relationship, but she also understands Cher to a better degree than Ty does, and I like that the film still makes it clear who Cher's closest friend is. Mitt's driving lesson, Dion wears a crochet beanie with white flowers and a white knit sweater. Other than it being a great outfit for spring, it also comes off as youthful and innocent, which is really important because she and Cher are kids. Although they often act and dress like they're more mature, there's in fact a lot of things that they don't know. After losing her virginity, we see Dion briefly lose interest in her original friend. Unlike other characters who are drawn to Ty because of popularity, Dion gravitates towards her because of her knowledge and experience. Cher has been acting like she knows what men want, but the truth is that she's totally clueless, and Dion needs actual advice. In the scene, she's wearing a hot pink top with matching flower barrettes. Basically, she's dressed like a girl in love. Also note that she and Cher aren't dressed remotely alike. They're not prioritizing the same things right now. Dion's neon green outfit is nothing we haven't seen before, but I do think it's really cute. While helping Cher with the Pismo Beach relief, we see Dion in a baby pink crop top and metallic hot pants. It's an alarming amount of skin to be showing at school, but as it's moving into a warmer season, we can somewhat justify it. You can also see that she and Cher are on the same page again as they're matching, down to the reflective fabrics. The outfit Dion wears to Miss Guy's wedding seems to be a callback to the Christmas party, where she wore something incredibly similar in silhouette. 
While the majority of wedding guests are wearing pastels, Dion is sporting a bubblegum pink halter top, a neon green floral skirt, and an assortment of flowers in her hair. The look overall is incredibly playful and fun, while still staying true to her character's color palette. Notice that the last few outfits she's worn all look somewhat reminiscent to one another. Perhaps Dion has fallen into a sort of comfortable rhythm now that she and Murray are happier in their relationship. We've made comparisons between Amber and Dion throughout this section, but their similarities are made most obvious when Dion explains the sailor theme that she wants for her wedding. When I get married, I'm going to have a sailor dress, but it's going to be a gown. And then all my bridesmaids are going to wear sailor hats. That sounds so cool. Cher Horowitz. While we all love Cher today, it's important to note that that wasn't the point. The title of the film, Clueless is representative of Cher's entire character. She's incredibly out of touch with reality and lives a lifestyle a lot of people can only dream about. This really hip young girl who's so high in fashion and so intelligent but so like shallow in a, in a way. If this character has so much together, why is the name of the movie Clueless? Well, my interpretation, I'm sure everyone's is different, but my interpretation is what I want kids to get out of it. I mean, all this makeup and all this you know, facade we all put on and all this behavior, it's crap. It's just, it's not real. And bottom line is your heart's what's impo- important. Early on in the film, she jokes about how her life looks like a Noxzema commercial. For you youngins, Noxzema was a face wash company that switched up their advertising model in the 90s to focus on teens and began featuring young, attractive models in romanticized settings as a way to sell their products. Oh no, the guy from my art class. There's probably more oil on my face than this canvas. Relax, you just used Nuxima. Much like how using a specific brand of face wash isn't going to make your life instantly better, Cher is not the kind of person you should aspire to be like. You know I don't speak Mexican. I'm not a Mexican. Great, what was that all about? Lucy's from El Salvador. So? It's an entirely different country. Oh, what does that matter? You get upset if someone thinks you live below sunset. Jane Austen herself said that Emma Woodhouse was a protagonist that nobody would like. And as such, Cher is initially portrayed as a spoiled brat who is incredibly selfish and shallow. She acts like a know-it-all and regularly puts others down in order to make herself feel superior. The only reason we don't see her as a Regina George type is because one, Alicia Silverstone is so dang likable and charming, and two, by the end of the film, Cher actually attempts to atone for her past mistakes and better herself. Over the course of the movie, Cher wears over 50 different outfits, with actress Alicia Silverstone stating in recent interviews that she absolutely hated the fitting process, not understanding why the clothes were so important until after watching the film herself. Because Cher is meant to be incredibly influential, director Amy Heckerling wanted her style to be ahead of its time, and as such, her look was heavily influenced by trends that were coming down the runway instead of what was being sold in stores. Mona May often described Cher's style as timeless, Quote, when I look at her clothes, I don't think they will ever go out of style. She's very Euro fashion. And we can see this French aesthetic make appearances in Cher's berets, peacoats, and A-line skirts. As for all the plaid her character wears throughout the film, May said, quote, it had to be plaid. It's just quintessential school. You're taking this Catholic school uniform and now twisting it to high fashion and then transforming it yet again through the eyes of the high school girl. Aside from plaid, we also see Cher wear Argyle, another academia-associated print, which interestingly enough has made a comeback in recent years. Much like Fran Fine in The Nanny, who has a go-to look of miniskirts and turtlenecks, Cher similarly has a uniform of sorts. When going to school, we see her wearing A-line or pleated skirts, some kind of blazer or long sleeve blouse, sweaters, Mary Jane heels, and knee-high socks. It's an ode to a classic schoolgirl uniform, but with a high fashion twist. In Cher's mind, appearances are everything, hence her desire to make over both Ty and Miss Geist, believing that by changing their looks as she has, they'll be successful in the same way. Cher makes sure that every aspect of her wardrobe is perfect, from the top of her head down to her shoes, which is why at school she feels like she has to cultivate the image of the perfect student. Early in the film, we see that Cher has a penchant for skirt sets and feminine colors, so it's no surprise that her ahead-of-its-time computer closet swipes through a few similar options before finally settling on the iconic yellow plaid suit. Costume designer Mona May said that the yellow suit was actually one of the most difficult outfits to figure out. They wanted it to be memorable while still making sense for the scene and for the character. They tried on several different iterations of the plaid suit, from red to blue, but it wasn't until they had Alicia try on the bright yellow Dolce & Gabbana suit that they fell in love. 
With the yellow suit, Cher looks like sunshine, symbolic that she is not only the center of her own world, but firmly believes that she's brightening others' lives as well. As if the computer wasn't enough of an indication that her character is committed to perfection, she even chews gum that is the exact same color as her outfit. And no, I don't think that's a coincidence as even Dion has color-coordinated candy at one point in the film. In the 26 years since the release of Clueless, the yellow suit has become a legendary fashion moment. Not only is it a go-to Halloween costume, but it's also been referenced in other media, like Iggy Azalea's fancy music video and K-pop group Luna for their Love Forever music video. Even in the recent adaptation of Emma starring Anya Taylor-Joy, they take a moment to reference the look in Clueless with the character wearing a bright yellow pelisse as a purposeful reference to Cher's suit. When Cher gets home, she changes out of her stiff school outfit and into something more casual, yet still undeniably chic. Whenever she's at school, she consistently wears skirts and dresses, always playing the part of the perfect girl. She only ever wears pants at home where she doesn't feel the need to put up a front. I know it sounds mental, but sometimes I have more fun vegging out than when I go partying. Maybe because my party clothes are so binding. Similarly, when she's around Josh, she dresses in simpler outfits of black and white, as opposed to the glamorous, colorful look she wears around school. This is similar to how she and Dion coordinate to publicly show their friendship. She inadvertently dresses like Josh because of her attachment to him. Over the course of the fall semester, we see Cher in various iterations of her go-to outfit, with plaid print and blazers making regular appearances. This pink, yellow, and black plaid jacket is actually from the Anna Sui Fall Winter 1994 collection, and like a few other outfits Cher wears throughout the film, it actually makes an appearance in The Nanny. Although it may look silly at a quick glance, the hat that Cher wears in this scene is an ode to a real pop culture moment. And no, it isn't Mary Poppins. On the show Blossom, which ran from 1990 to 1995, Mayim Bialik's title character wore floppy hats with large oversized flowers. They were initially worn to give the character a unique look, but it eventually became a full-blown trend in the 90s and you could find Blossom hats everywhere. Aside from her schoolgirl look, Cher also wears cap-sleeved empire dresses, helping create a classic aesthetic that ties into her character's somewhat princessy attitude. It also happens to be a clever ode to the source material. Jane Austen's novel was published in the midst of the Regency period, when empire-waisted gowns were in fashion. By having Cher wear this style of dress, it calls back to the idea that this type of person will always exist regardless of time period, and also how fashion is cyclical. Unlike Dion, who dresses in a more mature way, much of Cher's clothing reflects her character's childishness and naivete. A great example is her PE uniform. While layering tops in this fashion has since become popular, it is distinctly unique in the context of this film. Notice how most of the other girls are wearing tight-fitted clothes, yet Cher has on a looser t-shirt? It immediately makes her look younger in comparison, which is important to understand as her character is constantly trying to act older than she truly is. Do you have any idea what you're talking about? No. Why do I sound like I do? We'll see a similar look make an appearance again later in the film, after she realizes her feelings for Josh, and is left feeling even more like a child. At the party in the valley, Cher wears another one of the film's most iconic outfits, a red dress that, yes, is actually an Alaya. At the time, the brand itself was really only known by those in the fashion world, so the fact that Cher not only knows what it is, but also owns an Alaya dress, reveals that she is incredibly knowledgeable about fashion, much more than the average person. For the most part, Cher seems to fit in when she's out in public, but this outfit reveals how little she cares about conforming to others. Most people at the party are dressed casually, jeans and t-shirts even, but Cher looks like she's headed to a black tie event. Obviously, she looks fantastic, but it's hardly appropriate for the situation. So when someone drops a drink on her shoes, it's not only inevitable, but kind of justified. The peplum jacket is a nice touch that creates gorgeous shape, and it's also interesting to see feathers make yet another appearance and solidify how on Cher it looks glamorous while on Amber it's messy. Luke over on Hot La Mode has a great video covering the importance of this outfit as well as other moments in Clueless, so I'd highly recommend checking that out if you're interested in learning more about the impact that Clueless had on fashion in film. At the start of the spring semester, Cher develops a crush on Christian, and she begins acting and dressing in a more romantic and sultry style in an attempt to get his attention. It worked for Miss Geist, it should work for her too, right? Cher has spent the majority of the movie playing a part, but now instead of trying to be the perfect schoolgirl, with Christian, she's trying to make herself appear as the ideal romantic interest. 
This sequence is perhaps one of the best depictions I've seen of what it's like to be young with a crush, because at the time we really think that these sorts of games and schemes will make the other person like us, when really it just looks silly. The film references the musical Gigi when Cher comes down the stairs to greet Christian before the college party. Gigi! You're not at all that funny, awkward little girl I knew. Oh no, I was mad not to have seen the change. In the musical, the song represents how Gaston has begun to see Gigi as a young woman and realizes that he has feelings for her, which we see mirrored by Josh, who acts jealously when Cher appears. In the 1949 Gigi film, Gigi actually wears a white gown herself during the scene, and Gaston scolds her for it. Cher's father states that the dress looks like underwear, a reference to Calvin Klein's popular ads of the time. Similar to the Valley Party, Cher wears a jacket over the dress, but because she's still attempting to seduce Christian, it's completely sheer, essentially deeming it useless. Cher's interest in Christian is entirely because of his appearance. He fits her idea of what the perfect boyfriend would look like. He's an accessory. You like Billie Holiday? I love him. Right. Not only do they have very little in common, but if she'd been less preoccupied with herself, she might have noticed the obvious signs that he wasn't interested in her. When she invites him over, she wears a red slip dress and far heavier makeup than we've seen her in this far. Her intentions are immediately obvious. She wants to look older and sexier in the hopes that it will help her seduce Christian. Sometimes you have to show a little skin. This reminds guys of being naked, and then they think of sex. As we've learned, Cher believes that she can accomplish anything through sheer willpower. So when this fails, it shakes her entire belief system. What's wrong with me? She attempts to regain control with clothing by wearing the spring version of one of her plaid outfits. But instead of being the center of attention as she's used to, she's overshadowed by Ty. It's at this point that Cher starts to lose control, and it culminates when she has her driver's test. <sighs> Today's the driving test. It's my most capable looking outfit. So I had to find my most responsible looking ensemble. Where's my white collarless shirt from Fred Siegel? She wants to wear a specific shirt in order to create the image that she's capable, only for her to have to resort to wearing something else, and as such, is left feeling insecure. Out of all of Cher's outfits, this feels the least cohesive, perfectly mirroring her state of mind. And after failing her test and fighting with Ty, she's left broken. This is the first time she's been unable to change her circumstances. She's finally being held responsible for her own actions. I can't believe I failed. I failed something I couldn't talk my way out of? It all boiled down to one inevitable conclusion. I was just totally clueless. Cher has spent the majority of her life focused on appearances, but when she finally realizes that it's her soul that needs a bit of a makeover, she uses her perfectionist nature to her benefit and goes into overdrive trying to be better. She's able to use her influence for good and becomes less selfish, not only helping out at home, but at school as well. Maybe Marky Mark wants to use his popularity for a good cause, make a contribution. Oh. Don't forget to sign up for the environmental fair. I decided I needed a complete makeover. Except this time, I make over my soul. With her newfound emotional maturity, we see Cher's style shift. Not only does she start wearing pants to school, but overall she appears more approachable. This character growth is reflected by her being able to work with Amber, make up with Ty, and befriend Travis. Her judgmental and shallow nature is gone. This pink outfit is still true to her character's original style, down to the collared blouse and plaid print, but she looks far more relaxed and easygoing. When she and Josh finally admit that they have feelings for one another, she's wearing a white lace top, purple pants, and sneakers. She actually looks her age, and as the audience, we can understand that Cher is finally being true to herself without worrying about what others think of her. Cher's bridesmaid's dress may not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it's incredibly symbolic. Because Miss Geist is the only successful match Cher makes in the film, this is an incredibly important moment for her character. In a way, it's forgiveness for her other failures and justifies some of her actions. By becoming one of Miss Geist's bridesmaids, it reveals that she's not 
not only matured enough to have this responsibility, but that the two have genuinely formed a friendship outside of Cher selfishly wanting to make her grades better. By having Cher's dress mirror Miss Geist's wedding gown and silhouette, we're once again shown how clothing can be used to create a camaraderie between characters, allowing the audience to literally see how close they've become. Much like how Cher's empire dresses call back to the source material, her bridesmaid's dress also features a Regency-era fashion trend the Spencer, which was a short-fitted jacket that was popular from the 1790s to the 1820s. Cher's pink satin bolero is a clever way of featuring a similar item, but updated for the times. Every single aspect of this film is practically perfect, from the writing to the direction to the costuming. And it's really a shame that so many people write it off as a silly chick flick just because it happens to be about a young woman. It's a brilliant coming-of-age story about acknowledging your own flaws and working to better yourself. So if you haven't watched it yet, you really should. CBS has recently announced that they're planning to make another Clueless TV show, but considering the plot was described as a, quote, baby pink and bisexual blue-tinted, tiny sunglasses-wearing, oat milk latte and Adderall-fueled look at what happens when the high school queen bee Cher disappears and her lifelong number two Dion steps into Cher's vacant Air Jordans. It completely forgets the film's roots as a Jane Austen novel and turns it into a generic Riverdale knockoff. What movie would you like to see analyzed next? I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye!